Hey there guys, Headphones Neil here, back with my final review for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic for Android, the 2003 game that I want to say revolutionized what we could do in the Star Wars universe. So um, I finally finished getting through all the, the, or the entire game, including uh, be, com, uh, defeating Darth Malak on the Star Forge. So I wanted to do, uh, I don't know if it's going to be a quick or slow burn as far as a summary of the game, but I wanted to give an overview of just, or a final overview of the planet order that I went through, and then um, just things that I like, um, uh, items that I missed in this particular game play just in the way I was playing, and things that I like, dislike to the game. So let's jump right into it. So as far as the planet play order, um, just to get that out of the way, um, Terris and Dantooine are the first two planets to visit in that order, um, no, notably just because that's how you have to start the game. So you're crash landing on ter Terrace, and then once you escape, um, and, or after rescuing Bastila, she recommends going to Dantooine. So fr then from there you get your force powers. Um, after that it becomes an RPG in that you can explore the planets in any way that you wish. Aside from the Unknown World and the Star Forge, you have to explore those two in that order because of the playthrough of the game. Um, when you're going from the final planet that you visit for the star map to get to the Star Forge, you crash land on the Unknown World. Um, so in this case, I visited um, the Yavin 4 station just to get that out of the way. It wasn't really any per uh, special um, thing to visit. There is some armor and stuff there, so if you have the money, you can um, upgrade your armor either for yourself or for your teammates, um, but that's also optional. Um, from there, I went to Tatooine, Kashyyyk, Manan. Um, once you get visit that um, fourth planet, the Leviathan comes into play. That's uh, Kartho Nassi's former admiral ship. Um, and then I went to Korriban. Um, my reasoning in this case, or in this playthrough for doing it in that way was going off of my memory of the difficulty and, um, amount of stuff to do on each world and well, mostly just the difficulty, um, in getting things done on those planets. So I went in that order and I found that doing it in that order was made the game actually that much easier because the levels are not necessarily any easier or harder than the others. It's just that for some reason the powers, or if, or in my case, because I was going on the dark side, going in that order made the game that much easier. Um, granted, there were some missions that I did miss, but I will get to that in, um, in a little bit. Um, because that relates more to the Jedi and Sith part of things or the light and dark side of the force more than the planet order. Um, but I did find that doing the planets in that order made them that much easier as I went through them, um, especially when I got to um, the Leviathan and the Korriban, um, just because once you get to that those points, if you're playing as a Sith um, or on the, as a dark side user, having your force powers upgraded makes yourself more powerful than the people on those ships, so you can get through them that little bit easier. Um, granted, I did die a couple of times or a few times um, on those levels, but, or n notably the Leviathan and especially on the Star Forge, but I know I died a lot fewer times than I normally would have if I had gone in a different order. Um, notably for the, for Korriban, just because, um, the levels are that a little bit harder there. Um, Tatooine, I want to say, is probably one of those other randomly hard levels just because you have to fight with the Tuscan Raiders, you have a random, the ambushes, and then, um, I want to say Callow Nord has showed up every time on Tatooine for me, so having to fight and defeat him, um, finally there makes it, um, important for that, but having deal, dealt with it early, and because you have force powers, uh, defeating him is not that bad. Um, and then the Unknown World is probably the easiest level just because that's kind of a carryover, kind of like a breather before you, between your final world and getting to the Star Forge. Um, but once you get to the Star Forge, you are going to have to deal with a lot of Dark Jedi, robots, um, and finally Malik. So, um, it's important to make sure that your health is up. You have enough, um, health packs. You do get a lot of life support packs as you're defeating the Dark Jedi. So that's good to know. But if you have, um, drain life or energy feel or death feel, sorry, as a Sith or heal on 
as a Jedi, then you should be relatively okay. It all depends from their higher force resistance powers come into play. I didn't really build up on the force resistance, but if you have Bastila and or Jolie Bindo, um, or at least, but for sure, at least Bastila, which I think is required, then um, you should be okay on the healing front. Um, but I would say, or from there, it makes the game that much easier. So with that, I'll jump into reviewing some of the force powers. Um, overall, the game in that order, in the order I played is um, e- relatively easy as a Sith, but the one force power that I did not include was energy resistance or force resistance. So having that probably would have made the game a little bit easier as far as fighting the Dark Jedi because you can resist their force powers, uh, force push, stasis, choke, and all of that. So um, not having or having Basla do it is easy for her, but then not having it for myself made it that much harder for me to get through it. Um, as a Jedi, I want to say it probably would have been ha- nice to have that light side power, but I didn't do it this time around, so that's neither here nor there. Um, the force powers that I am thankful for, and that I, of course I want to do that just for me, was um, energy field, which is a the higher version of drain life, and uh, force storm, which is the um, ultimate power for, um, the spark and force lightning. So, and actually it turns out both powers were used by Darth Sidious or Emperor Palpatine in the Star Wars universe. So it was nice to use it in the game. Um, and, and it's in a more localized manner, granted, but it's nice to be able to play with those powers as a Sith. Uh, as a Jedi, um, I want to say, force resistance i don't know if battle meditation is available in this first kotor game um um but and it's weird that it's not that bastila didn't have that um power to use i always thought that she did but i don't know if it's maybe one of those things where you have to manually upgrade it for her but in any case it was neither it's neither here nor there it showed up at the end where she uses a, in a cutscene, which kind of was a bummer. So if I ever do, um, play the game again as a light side user, then I might try to see if I can get that power or manually upgrade it in Bastila so that it can be used. Um, I think I'm pretty sure, or I'm more pretty sure that it's available as a power in Knights of the Old Republic 2, but also, I'm relying on my memory of years ago, so there is that. Um, and then, of course, the one feat that I know I did not really plan well for in the, this playing it this time around was a computer spikes or computer skills. So having to use computers was a lot of credit or required a lot of spikes for me, but using T3M4 made it that much better because if you continually upgrade him, then that cost goes down quite a bit. Um, if I had pro- tried to use him on the Starford, I probably could have gotten the, um, about gotten good, gotten Revan's robes, or if I had bulked up on computer spikes, as in having more than I think 21, I could have gotten it, which would have been nice to play with. I don't know that it would have affected the outcome of the game that much, but would have been nice to have it. But, um, that's kind of a downside on my part. So as a, uh, recommendation I would say whether you're playing as a light or dark side user definitely bulk up on um, computer spikes and skills early on in the game and because they're those points are I think two or it requires two skill points each time you level up versus one for most other things like persuade and health so um, health and persuade that you can love you can increase as you play through the game and um improve those as you go, but computer skills and spikes take a little bit longer to do so because you only get one point at a time. So that's one of those things that if you're not going to use your droids that much, then I recommend um, bulking up on that. Um, or at least having more than, you know, the base level of what you get with the game. So that way, at least you can, instead of having to spend, for example, 15 spikes on something, you can spend 12 or 10, or at least get as many as you can from T3M4, um, and as, which is what I was reading on a forum, get as many as you can from T3M4, put them in a crate on the Ebon Hawk and keep bulking up on them and then pick them all up and put them back in your inventory. So that way you have those available if you need them. Um, other than that, 
Um, the gameplay is enjoyable. The graphics are of their time for 2003, but they're good enough as far as playing the game on a mobile device. They don't really stand out as any better or worse than a few other games out there. Um, if you want to get as many um, experience points as possible, I would recommend uh, finishing as many um, levels prior to your fourth planet. So in my case, with the Geno Harden that I saw that I dealt that I saw on Manon, um, having if I had dealt with that prior to going to Korriban, I would have been able to probably get those experience points and deal with that story arc um, and clear those up. For example. Um, so that's my recommendation for that. If you have a um, mission, then definitely try to um, finish as many as you can so you get those additional um, experience points to level up as much as possible. Um, the one downside to as a dark side user I found was that you don't get as many story arcs as you would as being a uh, light side user because your teammates or your companions on the Evan Hawk open up a little bit more if you... Um, are a, if you're compassionate and deal with them. So, for example, I didn't, I did not get the story arc for Bastila's mom, which I think was on Tatooine. Um, finding Mission's brother who was on the cantina and Tatooine as well. Um, but they might be random drops as well. But those are my memories from 15 to 17 years ago. Um, and then those two story arcs I don't know that I've ever gotten were Jolie's wife to. Um, finish that story arc and then also uh, Carthonassi's son becoming a warrior for the Sith on the Sith Academy. I didn't, I've never gotten those two story arcs. So the thing there is to be able to, if you talk to your teammates enough, you can deal with those story arcs and um, you have to have them in the, or use them on the right planets in the right areas. So for example, with Karth's son watching some videos online, um, you have to take Karth with you when you're on Manan and then on um, Korriban when you visit, visit the Sith Academy so you can deal with that. Jolie Bindo, it depends. Um, I know that there his, he has his story arc with his friend on Manon, but beyond that, I'm not sure. With Bastila and Mission, I rem for some reason, I remember both of their story arcs expanding on Tatooine if you talk to them enough. But I also, I think, very previously did Tatooine later in my planet, visiting the planet, so there was that as well. Um... So that's really all there is for that. So it's just depending on your force affiliation, you get different amount, different amount of stories. And then, for example, at the on, when you're on the unknown world, if you're a light side user, Karth would stay with your party versus running away and leaving your party if you are a um, dark side user. So overall, the story holds up. There is a lot to do. The store, the planets are expansive, even though there are times when you do have to run around quite a bit to accomplish different things. Um, there pretty fleshed out even though the stories can get kind of corny and cheesy at times especially with the animations that they have going on but they are definitely interesting to play through and listen to even though sometimes they can get kind of annoying when you're in the middle of trying to accomplish something and then it, the game pops up and says that it sounds like character so-and-so wants to um talk to you or sounds it looks like the so-and-so character has something on their mind so that aside, the game is overall fun. I do like getting the, the various force powers, seeing them in action, working with the very different characters, to um, and going to the different planets, expanding force abilities that you've normally only seen in the movies like force run, heal, lightning, um, drain life, um, and then also other powers like um, building up your uh, lightsaber fighting abilities, so like dual wielding, uh, um and then force jump and things like that. So overall, the game is fun to play. Um, it is a bit on the expensive side. If you do want to play it, it is $9.99 in the Google Play Store. Um, I assume it's the same amount in uh, for iOS. Um, but in any case, the game is worth it. It is very expensive. It is still fun to play. It does fit well with the mobile um, atmosphere. And yes, it is to $9.99 for iOS users as well. Um, but overall, it is still fun to play. The graphics hold up for what they are. Story is okay, but not a detriment. And so the only real downside might be the controls. Um, when you are selecting your various things to upgrade your character, that's the only time when the game kind of falls apart because 
picking your force attributes is super small and every so often scrolling is a bit weird because it is built for a keyboard and mouse interface versus a touch screen so you do have to squint quite a bit and you have to make sure you're touching the right force power that you want to upgrade so when you do touch your force power it does become easy to read but it is super small and hard to touch the right one so it kind of will take a little bit of getting used to on that front but once you get used to it and know what to expect then it becomes that much easier so that's all there is for this particular review so um, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, uh, supporting the show to give a little back if you like what I do. Um, I'll ha- In the episode guide, I'll have a link to the full YouTube playlist for all the videos and reviews and all of that so you can have them all in one place. Um, and then I'll have it embedded in the uh, website post as well. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.